Well, good morning. What about resisting the enemy? Have you ever tried to do that? Well, if you were with us yesterday, and if you weren't, go to our YouTube channel, uh, Renewing You Network with Jeffrey Paul, and you will be able to see that portion of what we taught about casting your cares and your anxieties on the Lord because He cares for you. That came out of 1 Peter chapter 5, and it was, it was powerful. It was verse 7. But the Bible is so perfect. The scriptures are so perfect in how they link everything together. They don't just throw an instruction to you and not give you even a depth of understanding. Because when you go to verse 8, 9, and 10, it really gives you the aftermath of what happens when you cast your cares on the Lord. Now, if you were here yesterday and you casted your cares down, you took your worries, your fears, you, you just poured it into the altar of God and said, you know, Lord, you you love me. You're taking care of this. Well, what happens immediately? Immediately. Tell me what happens. Well, generally speaking, the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, and the anxieties rise up with all kinds of voices. Oh, sure, you're going to turn this over to the Lord, and you're you're going to you're going to be in trouble. You're going to, you're going to find that this is not going to work out for you. See, the enemy to resist the enemy in chapter 5 of 1 Peter, verses 8 and 10, it says, resist the enemy and he will flee. It also says it in James 4, 7. But what does that mean to resist the enemy? Well, let's talk about that today. Resisting the, the devil, resisting the, the enemy, resisting anything, if you read it from the context of human strength, human ability, human intellect, you're going to resist with pressure, with your own force. You're going to try to, you know, not think about worry. You're going to try to not think about, uh, you know, um, what the devil's telling you is going to happen. You're going to, you're, and you're going to exhaust yourself and you're going to worry. <laughs> you're going to have anxiety. You can have probably greater anxiety because you really don't know your enemy and you really don't know his tactics and how he attacks you. But we're going to talk about that today because it's so important that you realize what it says in 1 Peter 5, verse 8 through 10. Be alert and sober-minded, the scripture says. Your enemy, the devil, and we don't want to use that word too often because it kind of is a little scary in the spiritual realm because you can't see him. But once you know his tactics, once you know his methodology and strategy that the scriptures, the scriptures really give you insight to. And the examples of even with Jesus battling the devil himself in the desert after 40 days of fasting, and he was tested and he was tested and he was tested. Jesus shows us how to win the battle and to resist the devil. And as it says in James, he will flee. But it says you're in, in, in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10, be alert and sober-minded. That is not speaking of the mind of human intellect. That is speaking of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, the mind of Christ, the Holy Spirit power of God that lives within you. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And remember what we said yesterday. Tiredness, exhaustion, fatigue, you know, COVID brain, whatever it might be that you might be suffering at this point uh, of post pandemic uh, life uh, that we're living. It is like what the actual lion does. He lays in the, in, in the bush and he looks at the pack and he doesn't chase the fastest front line runner. He waits for one that gets tired and falls back. He finds one that might be limping a little bit and he goes after the weak and he attacks. But it says, resist him standing firm in the faith. Now, I want to do something for a moment. If I can take a little liberty to exchange a word for your, just for your practice of thinking from the scriptural basis. Resist kind of, kind of looks like human effort. I'm going to try not to, you know, swear. I'm going to try not to, you know, be, you know, you know, mean. 
that's human effort, and that's not what the Bible talks about. And you surely don't want to use human effort to fight the devil, your enemy. He'll devour you. Now, he can't take your salvation away. That's that's given and on deposit, the Bible talks about. But he can make you miserable in your thoughts and your emotions and your feelings unless you resist him. But how do you resist him? Well, let's exchange resist for a moment with replace. And let's take for a moment the relationship of worry. And let, let's take even one. Let's take hate. Let's take hate. And what would we replace hate with? Love. Let's take anger. What would we replace anger with? And I'm talking about the thoughts before any action takes place. I'm talking about in the mind of Christ where the mind is battling. And you know the old story about the angel sits over here and whispers good things in your ear and the devil is over here and he whispers in your ear. I'm talking about taking, knocking him off of your shoulder and listening to the voice of God from the scriptures. So where there's anger, we think peace. And this comes out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Think upon these things. It didn't say there's nothing wrong, everything is great. Think about everything that is great. It says, think upon these things. And the word that starts that sentence is therefore. And if you read prior, you'll understand what therefore is. The, therefore, there's a lot of issues and a lot of circumstances and a lot of situations going on. But therefore, think upon these things that are beautiful, pleasing, praiseworthy, precious, wonderful. Now, let's put it into practical application. In today's life, who is truly setting your speculation of the world? When we get in a conversation, it's really easy to start conversing with people how the world is terrible, it's upside down, it's under this, uh, the government is this, the, and we get into debates. It's really easy to join that crowd, that mindset, that thought process. And you say, well, Jeff, that's what's really going on. But you know what? You know what's really going on? Go to the scriptures and find out what God says is going on. What's going on? He's with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He loves you. He'll protect you. He'll provide for you all things at all times in all circumstances, it says. And see, when you replace the worldview, the world paradigm, the mindset of human nature, and even the current events, and you replace it with what God says in his word, and he whispers the, the, the enunciation of it within your spirit through the Holy Spirit, then you truly are resisting the devil. And he, in James says, must flee. Now, for a moment, give me a comment. Have you tried to resist? Now, wait till my full question comes out. Have you tried to resist the enemy and failed? Give me a yes or no. <laughs> and on your own strength and your own power. And try it hard. But like Luke Skywalker and Yoda, don't try. Do or don't do, but don't try. Because on your own strength and your own power, you will fail in the spiritual battle. It's over your head. It's beyond your ability. But what did Jesus do in the desert, in the book of Matthew? He resisted the devil by replacing what the devil was saying to him in his mind, in his emotions, in his feelings, with what God said in his word. Now, Capture that for a moment. That was a great thing you read in the Gospels, probably, and you went through it in 40 days, maybe back in Easter time, and you learned about fasting. There's a whole lot more in that scripture. What's in that scripture is the principles of how to win the battle against the enemy, how to live this in this world that we're not <clears throat> of, but we're in. It is, the, it is the secret to truly being more than a conqueror. And what is that? to replace whatever the devil says with what God says. Replace it. Now, again, you have to have that Holy Spirit power within you, giving you the fanning of the flame that 2 Timothy 1, 6, and 7 is being instructed to Timothy from Paul. Fan it into flame. 
because you don't have a spirit because the devil was telling him he had the spirit of timidity. Paul said, you don't have the spirit of timidity. You have the spirit of power and of love, sound mind and self-discipline. What were we doing? He was reciting the promises of God, the declarations of God, the affirmations of God to Timothy to raise him up from where he had been taken captive in his mind. That's why it says in 2 Corinthians, it talks about taking captive every thought unto Christ Jesus, not unto yourself will and not unto your own efforts and strength. But hear this today, resist the devil. And he will, he must, he has no other choice as in Matthew chapter four, where Jesus resists the devil. It doesn't happen just once, but repetitively came back at the devil with the thoughts the devil was trying to penetrate and the fiery arrows that he was shooting at him. He would resist them with the shield of faith and would speak the words of the gospel. He would speak the words of the actual word of God God says. So when you start to get a little weak and you feel a little beaten up, I'm more than a conqueror. When you're feeling you can't run anymore, you just, you're out of gas. I can run and not grow weary. I can walk and not faint. I can soar on wings of eagles as Isaiah 40 talks about. And there are 7,000, at least the number I've heard, of those type of affirmations in the Word of God that represent the ability to resist the devil and be more than a conqueror. Now, in the comments, are you going to resist? Are you more than a conqueror? Then put in the comments, I am more than a conqueror. Put it in the comments. Let the real you be released from the captivity that the enemy has tried to take you. You've been set free, but you're set free by the truth. And the truth will set you free. You're free indeed, it says in John 8. But that comes from the Word of God. That's the truth. So if you sense, and I see you coming in now. I see you coming in. There's Debbie. Debbie gives us a big yes. Judith, there's a big yes. Johnny, there's a big yes. Um, and then there's, there's Debbie, we have all failed and fallen short of the glory the Bible talks about. And Judith, what a great word. It is written. It is written. And Deb, now that you got the right, all capital letters, I love that. I am more than a conqueror. Yes, you are, because the truth will set you free. There's my friend Tim. Tim is giving me a yes as well. So understand, we are in a place of victory. We are not in a place of, of over being overcome. So today, today, resist the devil. And he must, he will flee. Because when he came, Jesus said, when the devil was coming at him, in another scripture in, 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 in John, he said, the devil's coming, but he has no place in me. He has no place in you. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're filled with the love of God, if you're filled with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there is no place, there is no place for him to wedge in. And that is your glory today. Have a precious and wonderful day. See you tomorrow.